I can't wait to look around to see what's what's going on here. Miss Butler, can we interrupt and see what's going on? Hello, Margaret Hi. Nice to meet you. Students, this is U.S. Secretary of Education, Margaret Spellman. Hi, I'm Hello. Okay. He did a case for him, and he still hasn't, like, he's been in the and for Tom Robinson, he's doing it for free. So they have the case in connection. Okay. Help me welcome U.S. Secretary, Ms. Margaret Spellman. Okay, yo, 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 se. Yo sé mi número de teléfono. Is that correct? No, I need an acento because if you don't. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, um, good morning. I'm, I'm Steve Barr. I'm the founder and CEO of Green Dot Public Schools. And we're blessed and happy to have you in Eagleboy. And I'm just happy you're here. To, last year, they graduated their first class. And 82% of their seniors were accepted to four-year colleges here in Inglewood. So in, in a tradition of... Uh, Nancy Chinaga, Mark Thompson, these two young generational upstarts come here and created a new revolution. It is a movement. It is something that can be replicated. You are replicating it. Uh, and it's, you know, it, it's very difficult work, no doubt about it. But we can do it, and, and you all are doing it. And uh, I don't know about minor miracles. I'm kind of thinking major miracles. You know, No Child Left Behind, as I sometimes say, we passed the very best law we could five and a half years ago. When we didn't have annual assessment. We didn't, you know, disaggregate data very widely. Half of our states waited until the 0506 school year to embrace this sort of data-driven decision-making, which was already a way of life here. And so well, there were some things we've learned and we can fix it. One of the important things about, about this law that it relates to charter schools is we have to start making some, you know, have a more nuanced accountability system where we can talk about the chronic underperformers distinct from those schools that are what I call within range. When I heard about the charter school, I just said, oh God, you really answered my prayers. You know, I hope this is gonna work. And she's one of those miracle Wow. stories that she did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm very proud and happy to know that my children are going to school. Seeing that first class graduate was probably one of the most rewarding experiences that I've ever had. And so when I was offered this new position as the vice principal, I I felt so invested in the school that, <laughs> that we were, you know, some of the few people left that were here when we started. And I felt such attachment to this school that I, I don't want to let somebody else come in and take the job. So what are we going to do to create the political movement or with respect to federal support uh, and using the accountability tools that are before us with No Child Left Behind to expand and foster more of what you all are doing here? So, you know, I, I just want to introduce somebody here, and it's really important that he's here. I think it kind of leads into the answer. Uh, Frank, uh, Dr. Frank Wells is the principal of Locke High School. And he came here today. Uh, Locke has been in the news a lot. So when you talk about consequences, accountability, and saving a community, I hear this stuff all the time, and it, 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 I'm getting tired of it. So I decided to hear, because at LAUSD, we talk about why we shouldn't go Green Dot or any other charter, but it dawned on me that we never talked about why we should do something different. Because doing the same old thing, you're going to get the same old result. And if you come to Lock High School, these are the same kids with hopes, dreams, and aspirations that all other kids have. But they see it blow up in their face every day. And so the accountability that the gentleman talked about, we've been PI 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever, for us. Uh, yes. <laughs> and nothing is going to change these kids' lives unless you do something revolutionary. We start communicating this message and parents talking to parents and teachers, and Miss Butler used to be a teacher at Locke, there's a lot of teachers from Locke, we start talking to each other, and Mr. Wells reached out to me, and we're talking to each other, and then you actually just, when you break it all down, charter versus non-charter, union versus union, because we have our own union too, yeah. we realize that a lot of things we're doing are the things that when you actually listen to teachers and parents and administrators, just common sense things they've been asking for for years. You know, as I said, we passed the very best law five years ago, and, and you know, this moment was, you know, far into the distant future, and we didn't really have as much data, obviously, then as we do now. And so I think one of the major policy debates we're going to have in Washington, and I hope that you will all engage in this, 
uh, Steve, um, <laughs> is on this right now the laundry list after chronic underperformance. Okay, so year one, supplemental service, you know, public school choice, supplemental services, and so on. And then anything you want to is what it says in the statute. So it's, the it's very, very anemic in the in at the kind of chronic underperformer level. And that is what has to be made much more vigorous, much more robust. And obviously it makes a lot of people nervous. My name is Jackie Moreno. So my question for you is, what are the contributing factors to the low standardized test scores in the past and now? And what is the program No Child Left Behind doing to change these contributing factors? Uh, as far as contributing factors, there are a lot of them. And uh, we know that. We you know, often have kids who end up being what the president calls shuffled through the system. We now ask every school to test every kid every year in reading and math, report that data, that information in what we call in policy wonkery, a disaggregated way. That means we're going to separate uh, Hispanic achievement from African American achievement from special education achievement and we're going to hold ourselves accountable for the results of every one of those groups.